Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this really cool detection and observation of an exoplanet relatively far away from Earth but using a very unusual technique. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what you see on the screen right here is actually um, a slightly older representation of this particular star system known as HR8799. Here you can see uh, pretty clearly that with the star in the middle, there are actually four different exoplanets orbiting around this uh, star. And this is a, a distance of um, roughly around 129 light years away from the sun. Now, normally, when it comes to exoplanet detection, um, we don't regularly directly look at it. We actually detect most of the exoplanets by indirect means. Like, for example, by seeing uh, unusual effects on the star, such as decrease in luminosity when a planet passes in front of it. Or sometimes we actually detect them by looking at uh, the changes in motion of a star when the planet itself uh, pulls on the star and makes it move around a little bit. So normally uh, this is how we detect most of the exoplanets, but this time it's a little bit different. The scientists that published the paper that you can find in the description below, known as first direct detection of an exoplanet by the optical interferometry. Uh, this particular paper talks about this absolutely brilliant technique that is most likely going to become really popular now because that's kind of how we're planning to see the supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy as well. But this technique is, well, it's actually kind of simple, but complex. It uses several telescopes uh, located uh, in different places around the planet. The farther away, the better. And um, they essentially all stare at the same object at a distance. And in this case, it was the uh, planet around the star HR8799. Now, when they look at this particular planet, uh, it can be really in any sort of spectrum and for the black hole it was actually in non-visible spectrum but uh, in this case what we are looking at is the visible spectrum of this planet basically we're literally just staring at it as if we were using a normal telescope but because it's done from several locations if you combine the data from these locations you get the actual resolution that's at least 10 times as high because this is literally as if the telescope was this big thousands of kilometers across and having looked at this planet right here, HR 8799E, the closest planet to the star, they were able to see its atmosphere and also analyze its composition really accurately. This is actually the first time this has been done and at this distance, basically seeing the atmosphere visually is pretty incredible. Now, first of all, let's actually take a look at the system itself and what we have here. This uh, was discovered approximately 10 years ago, I believe. And this is the star itself. It's about 50% more massive than the sun. So it's uh, emitting a little bit more heat. And it has four different exoplanets we've discovered. And all four of them are actually more massive than Jupiter. They're all really, really, really big. And this system is still very, very young. Um, the planet we're looking at the one that's actually the closest right here, HR 8799E, was the latest discovered. And this object is uh, most likely at least 10 times the mass of Jupiter. Even though it's about the same size, in terms of mass, it's more massive. But it is quite far away from the actual star. Uh, the distance to the star that you can kind of see right there is about 14 and a half astronomical units. So it's actually farther away from its own star than our Jupiter is. And um, because of this, we don't really expect this to be a warm object, but the observation we've just made actually proves us completely wrong. So what we've discovered about this unusual planet by looking at it is essentially kind of, uh, well, it created more questions. So let's just put it that way. It's a little bit unexpected. So first of all, the temperature here is really hot. It's like 1000 degrees Celsius. And one of the explanations for why it's so hot and not cold like Jupiter is that maybe, just maybe, it's because it's actually a relatively new world. It's only about 30 million years old, whereas Jupiter is four and a half billion years old. So there's maybe age difference here. At the same time, we actually expected to find things like methane and um, obviously things like hydrogen, but instead what we've discovered is that for the most part, this atmosphere seems to contain a lot of carbon monoxide. Not dioxide, not the stuff that uh, plants use to breathe, but monoxide, which is basically the stuff that your car emits 
and, and the stuff that you're supposed to avoid um, breathing in because it's a little bit dangerous. It's also a very interesting compound because it's actually essential for life. Uh, but the fact that we found so much of it here is a little bit hard to explain. We also found a lot of hydrogen, but normally hydrogen mixes with carbon monoxide and produces all kinds of compounds. Uh, I think the first one that it usually produces is called methanola, which is basically uh, carbon, oxygen, and a bunch of hydrogen. Um, and then eventually it results in methane, but we seem to not see any of this. And so one of the explanations for why this unusual planet seems to have such a different composition from what we expected to see is that it probably has really strong winds. Winds that are kind of keeping all of these molecules apart from each other and prevent uh, interaction in terms of chemical reactions. So there's a lot of really strange stuff going on here. At the same time, this planet is also glowing hot. It's red hot, very, very, very uh, toasty on the surface here. And uh, so it's definitely different from what we imagine it to be and different from Jupiter. And even though it's so far away from its parent star and at the same time takes approximately 50 years to orbit just once, it seems to still have a lot of heat on the inside, which actually most likely suggests that this is how uh, early planets actually are. This is how the planetary formation works in the beginning. Now, as you can see, there's actually four other planets here and three other ones we didn't really get to see just yet because we were just looking at this one planet. Uh, but uh, you can also kind of see that this planet is so massive that it's forcing its parent star to move around it kind of. This is the orbit that you see forming here. That's from the actual star moving around this planet. And that's how massive this is. At the same time, the scientists behind this paper also discovered that this planet has an unusual amount of iron and silicates in its atmosphere that are circulating around and most likely are producing this super, super interesting, but very, very hot and very unfriendly to humans rain. Essentially rock rain and iron or metal rain. And that's not really something that we would like to experience. But the presence of iron and the presence of silicates is difficult to explain as well, because normally they're actually heavier, so they end up on the inside of the planet, not on the outside. But I guess if this planet had a lot of wind, it would make sense that some of this stuff kind of stays there and gets recycled through the motions of the actual winds around the planet. And so this study uh, paints a beautiful picture of this unusual exoplanet that is slowly developing and slowly um, stabilizing its activity while still undergoing a lot of really complex reactions, both physical and chemical, in trying to, I guess, establish its final identity. Now, interestingly, if you were to look at the star system um, as a whole, you'd realize that all of these planets, all of these exoplanets we've discovered, are actually really, really, really far away from the habitable zone. So even though these particular planets were discovered um, in the last uh, 10 or so years, we might still discover more planets in the system. Some of them might even be in the habitable zone, making this unusual star system very, very interesting because despite having so many actual gas giants here, there might be some terrestrial planets as well, or maybe even these gas giants could have moons that are terrestrial. And so this uh, amazing technique of optical interferometry will uh, definitely become the go-to technique now for looking at the planets and studying their atmosphere, but also studying the actual star systems as well. So on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely a very exciting study and ex an exciting way of using this really awesome technique, but the problem with that technique that I didn't really mention yet is that once you collect all of the data, it's surprisingly difficult to analyze it and to put it into one big picture because you really have to match the timestamps and you have to make sure that you're looking at the same object and at the same time. But other than that though, once we perfect the technique, this will allow us to see things that are really far away with a lot of accuracy. Anyway, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow if you would like to learn something else about space and the universe that you may have not known before and subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even share this video with someone who wants to learn more about space and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.